Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Crest, and of course, my channel, Barn on 11970. Thank you for taking the time to check out this video. Hope you guys are doing well. And um, I have been doing some researching about our prison systems. Um, I've been getting into, for some reason, a lot into the documentaries, um, a lot of information on it, and it's just amazing to me. I mean, I am a person who has not spent even one second in any jail or prison in my entire life. Worst thing I've ever done in my life is get a speeding ticket. And that, I think the last time I got a speeding ticket was probably over 10 years ago. So with that being said, it is amazing if we really think about the business of prisons and how they basically entrap people in an endless circle of being out for a little while, struggling, putting themselves back into a situation they really don't want to be in. And it's all about profit. Now, some of these, and you could see like PBS does them, um, History Channel, a whole bunch of different places do documentaries like Locked Up and all these other prison shows. And they talk about the average cost of one child to be in prison. Now, you're talking like an 18-year-old. To me, that's considered a child. Costs an average of about $87,000 per year. Now, just imagine how many billions of dollars. Because we are a nation that incarcerates more of its people than anywhere else in the world. As a matter of fact, as far as the world population of prisoners is concerned, we alone, our country, the United States of America Corporation, incarcerates about 25% of the world's population that's in prisons. And if you think about how many laws get passed where just the minor infractions now get you incarcerated and it costs that state millions if not billions of dollars a year, which where do you think that money comes from? Think about it when you follow the money because the warden's not paying the bills the prison guards are not paying the bills. The governor's not paying the bills. You're paying the bills. Because for whatever they purchase, whatever they build, whatever whoever they have to pay comes out of the people's taxes. And it takes away from programs that can educate people, that can keep people out of trouble, that could benefit us. Instead, we have to not only reduce some of the things that can keep our kids and people out of jails. But where do we get that money? We have to borrow it. And if you think about the cycles, the people at the top always benefit. I mean, you're thinking about like Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, all these people. Do you think they care about some nobody they've never heard of that maybe had a little bit too much of a family problems from financial problems started doing drugs and had to steal to survive and is thrown in a jail to rot you think they care they're cashing in and that's why you see one of our most growing businesses nowadays in this country are prison systems it's profitable it's not profitable for you and I. And look at the risks that even the people that work security in these prisons have to deal with. How they're overworked and understaffed. And I guarantee you, they're not making money where they can retire in 10 years. They show episode after episode of, for every one prison guard, there are sometimes up to a thousand prisoners. And they're working... 50, 60 hour work weeks, thinking at any moment you could be murdered or beat up. And they're getting, I can just imagine the pay. $15 an hour, $18 an hour, $20 an hour maybe. But it's the city and the state and the government and the banks that ultimately benefit while we sit back and not really think about the right people that should be in prisons 
if you've murdered somebody, if you've stolen from somebody, if you've done a crime that makes you deserve to be there, then yes, there should be a punishment system. But somebody that grew a plant in their backyard or did some minor infraction to put them in a situation where prisons are not meant to enlighten you, raise you up, educate you, make you better. It basically teaches you through the prison system how to survive any way you can. And that's why there are so many people that when they get out of jail, they go right back in again within the first three months of their release. And then think about how, if you even go by the 14th Amendment, I'm going to show you in the 14th Amendment where it shows that when you are in prison, you are a legal slave. And the 14th Amendment does not apply to you. Now, I'm going to show that really quick. Here's the 14th Amendment down there. If you have to pause it, pause it. But I will read it. I'm sorry, the 13th Amendment. My apologies. The 13th Amendment says neither slavery nor involuntary servitude. And I've had videos that talk about this, so I'm not going to get into the depths. But you read this part. Except as punishment for a crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall it exist within the United States or any place subject to the jurisdiction. Here it is. Look it up for yourself. Which means if you are thrown in jail, you are a legal slave. And that's why they can charge these workers in prisons, pay them about 10 cents a day, maybe 10 cents a week. And they have to fight for every little bit they have. And we all sit there and say, well, you know, they deserve to be there. They've committed the crime. They got to do the time. Well, not everybody deserves to be there. And they're creating law after law that makes it easier for the average person to get behind bars and end up repeating themselves and going back again. And they profit off of this because it is a business. You need customers. You need a product. And in a jail system, the prisoner is the product. And that's why, like even in California, you have the three strikes rules where you're automatically sent to jail. And look at all the people that are on parole when they're in jail for 20 years and they don't learn a trade they don't learn they don't get educated all they do is learn how to fight and survive and all of a sudden one day they just open the gates and say okay you're free to go and they have no family and they have no friends and they have no jobs because who's going to hire an ex-con where are they going to go what are they going to do they're either going to go back to crime or they're going to end up in jail again because it's an endless cycle and we all have to stop looking the other way because what doesn't affect us right away eventually affects us. It's a cycle that people cannot afford to look away from anymore. And until we start understanding and realizing what that system is all made about, it's taking your property, taking your wealth, taking your freedom. And again, like I said, if you've murdered somebody, kidnapped somebody, raped somebody, molested somebody, kidnapped somebody, killed somebody drunk driving, beat somebody or something, stealing from somebody, robbing their home, destroying their property, yes, you deserve to be behind bars. But if you watch these documents, you're talking about a bunch of 18-year-old kids that fight or they're in neighborhoods that are so poor and there's no programs to help them that they end up ultimately getting themselves in trouble. And society would rather just throw them in jail and lock away the key than try and save them. Every person deserves to have a chance. Every person deserves to be saved. Shame on people for wanting to look the other way. But ultimately, it's going to affect us. Because if you think, oh, I'm part of the high society and the better class of people, and I would never go there. Well, you're still paying for it. Because through their taxes, it's coming out of your pocket. So every time they incarcerate another person, that's money that's coming out of your pocket to support that business. And then they are bringing more people that go into jail for a minor infraction and come out hardened and learning a lot more crimes and how to get away with things than any kind of education that betters themselves.
So I hope people will take the time to see the bigger picture of things. And we need to stop being silent. We need to stop looking the other way. We need to stop being afraid of, well, that doesn't affect me, so I'll just ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist. Because eventually it comes into your life in one way, shape, or form. And when you get to the point where you're incarcerating 25% of the world's prisoners, there's something wrong. And the few are profiting off of the many. And we have to put a stop to it because these things exist because we, the good people, choose to do nothing. Stay silent. Pretend it doesn't exist. Look the other way. Afraid to say anything and speak your voice. Well, here I am speaking my voice. I want you to do the same. Even if it's as simple as sharing this video or thumbing it up, make your own. But we have to start spreading the voice. We have to stop looking the other way. Otherwise, we're going to get exactly what we deserve. And then it's nobody's fault but our own. And I hope we switch that cycle. Because the world, the way it's going, does not look like it's improving. And if we don't do anything about it, is it really just their fault? I think it's part ours for letting it happen. So thanks for taking the time to watch my video. If this is the first video of yours you've ever seen of mine, um, please hit the subscribe button. We'd love for you to be here. Give it a thumbs up. Let's hear your comments. And uh, thank you for watching. Enjoy your night.